B2EDI presents your first look at high school football scores and highlights. This is B2EDI First Down Friday Night. Sponsored by Whataburger, your community health mart pharmacy, and WeGenesis. Now your hosts, Mo Carter, Nick Kuzma, and Simon Williams. Hey, boys and girls, First Down Friday Night is back for another week. And, of course, Nick, the weather was so much better tonight than what it was last it week. It simply man. was so much nicer. The kids were still getting hydration breaks, which I appreciate because you got to do that. But, oh, my God, it felt so much better out there. It really, <laughs> really did. So, hey, of course, you know, we talked about kickoff week. This is now officially week one. The road to the Super 7 happening. A lot of solid matches going on, and there was a big one out there in the shows. Let's go to Simon Williams real quick for an early look at that contest. It was a showdown in the Shoals. It was a slugfest for sure. We've got a 9 nothing final score to get to. I've got all the highlights. Yes, we got highlights. I've got all of them coming up later on in the show. Guys, back to you. All right, so 9 nothing. I know it sounds like a defensive Man. showdown. Wait till you break down that film over the I'm weekend. I'm excited. Definitely. You should be excited about this, man. History made tonight down on the Parkway. See, which family feel at Joe Davis Stadium hosting its first football game in over 15 years? Here's a green and grissom. They were the first participants. So let's take you out there. A beautiful night under the lights at the Joe. Pick things up in the first quarter. Trojans down 7 to nothing. Brady Crawford will step in the pocket, but he runs out of time. Tim Cole Jr. is there for the sack. Trojans uh, will be forced to punt. Now here comes Chase Porter. He's going to take the handoff as we take a look at uh, Coach Charlie right there. But look, here's Porter, takes the handoff, follows his blocks around the right side, and guess what, Nick? He gone into gone. the end zone, 27 yards out. Tigers now up 13 to nothing. Now, on the ensuing extra point, there's a very bad snap. So you know what happens when you have a bad snap? You call that fire, 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 fire yeah. So Devon Douglas, you know, just gets on this nice little boat and just rolls into the end zone oh. for a score 15 to nothing. Tigers at that point. Let's give you the latest update we've got on this score from down the park rate right now. Grissom leads. Hazel Green by a score of 28 to nothing. We'll make sure we finalize these scores later on. Hazel Green will host Leon next week while Grissom will take on Huntsville. Off to Milton Frank Stadium we go now. Coach Rico White and the May Jemison Jaguars. They were looking for their first win again of the season going against Tanner. Rattlers up 7 to nothing. Carl Parham throws it deep. Check out this play. Skylar Townsend oh, can't make the catch. Oh. Goes off the helmet of May Jemison's Titus Jackson before falling incomplete. But guess what? Townsend will make up for it, Nick. Hauling in the pass from Parham. Then he's like, get off me as I stretch into the end zone for a touchdown. Rattlers, they strike and they strike again. If at first you don't succeed, try and try again. That's it. So, hey, let's show some love to the kickers now. Oliver Gonzalez, one of those state champion soccer players coming on, mm. booting in a 33-yard field goal. It's up and it is good. Rattlers were up at the half. Let's give you an update from Milton Frank Stadium right now. Right, The Tanner Rattlers are still out in front of May Jemison by a score of 24-7. to On next week, it'll be May Jemison traveling out east to take on Fort Payne, while Tanner will play host to Tharptown. Well, let's take our first trip over the Tennessee River to Trinity, where we had a Morgan County versus Limestone County clash between West Morgan and Ardmore. All right, let me put it this way, Mo. The West Morgan fans had a ton to cheer about tonight. The Tigers QB drops back, pass, ball, bingo. Ty Jones going back the other way, and no one will catch him. It's a pick six for West Morgan. The extra point would make it 41-0 to zero midway through the second quarter. And this sign here just about sums it up, as West Morgan was just better in every phase of the game. Here it's handed off to Jalen Fletcher. It looked for a second like he might go the distance but he will be knocked out of bounds inside of the Tiger five yard line. On the very next play, Jeremy Strong lives up to his last name. Wes Morgan goes up 48-0 before the half, and that ends up being the final score, 48-0. The Rebels top the Tigers. Next week, Wes Morgan travels to Killen to face Brooks. Ardmore will play another Morgan County school as they host Brewer. Last night at Milton Frank, Lee hosted Madison County, and it was 
all Lee early and often. First play from scrimmage, LaShawn Van takes the snap, hands it off to Carlin Long. He starts his run to the left side, cuts back around, and right into the end zone he will go. Out of here, out of here, he is gone. Touchdown, Lee, 6-0 is our early score after they can't convert the extra point. The home team gets back with 8.49 to go in the first quarter. Van in the gun, takes the snap, rolls left, looks to the throw. He's got nothing deep, so he takes off, cuts right, and he too is out of here, out of here, gone. Two drives, two big rushing touchdowns. It's 12-0 after another failed point after. All right, how about one more play to show you, because you know what? Let's do it. It's first down Friday night. It's another Lee rushing score. Just spoiler alert. The very next possession, it's first and 10 from the 33 yard line. Direct snap to Kentrell Boone. Takes maybe five steps right before exploding to his left, and he is in the end zone with a touchdown. Let's take a look at your final score as 486 rushing yards pushes Lee past Madison County in a 50 to 26 route. 13 carries for 160 rushing yards for former first down Friday night MVP of the week. Carlin Long next week. Madison County is at Priceville while Lee is at Hazel Green. All right, James Clinton is also hosting a Thursday night game, taking on Mountain Brook, the class 6A runner up from a year ago. First quarter, Clemens in punt formation. Parker Rogers coming through the line and blocks the punt. Ball will roll into the back of the end zone for a safety. They don't do dances, but they definitely will celebrate right there. Sparkman up, excuse me, Spark, Spark tons up two to nothing. Ensuing drive, here comes Mountain Brook. The direct snap to Cole Gamble, and the gamble is good right there into the end zone for a score right there, making it nine to nothing. Now, Let's go to the final minute of the half. Spartans punting from deep inside their own territory. Ty Doty will uh, break a few tackles and then he will make a house call into the end zone for a touchdown. He gets James Clemens back in his game. It's now 12 to 7. Look at the light show, Nick. You gotta I love, love that, it. Right? No, I love that out there. Yep. But the Spartans, they would extend their lead when Cole Gamble will take the direct snap, heads outside and scores from three yards out. He gives them an 18 to 7 lead and Mountain Brook goes on to win by a final of 18 to 13 last night in Madison. Next week, speaking of Madison, it's the Madison Bowl as the Jets will take on crosstown rival Bob Jones in a must-see contest in which somebody's got to win that one. It's true. Of course, the Fox 54 sports team is on social media. Follow us at these various social media locations on Twitter. You've got at Mo Carter Fox at 54. X, oh. It's X now. Uh, yeah, but most people still know it as Twitter for the Fair time right. being. You know, I won't get in trouble for saying that. At Mo Carter Fox 54, at Nick P. Kuzma, and also at Simon H. Williams. You know the deal. Shoot us a tweet. We may read it later on. You know we will know. I mean, Jordan sent us last one last week. So did my girlfriend Haley. We love reading tweets. Rivalry games coming up next. Welcome back. Tonight we had the 61st installment of the River City rivalry between Austin and Decatur. And for the first time since 2010, the matchup did not pit head coaches Jeremy Perkins and Jerry Adcock against each other. That's because Adcock, of course, retired last year, but he was back at Ogle Stadium tonight as an honorary captain and to do the coin toss. Austin won the toss, elected to defer, forced Decatur to punt, and now the Black Bears rip off a chunk play. JL Davis dumps it off to Kenneth Joshua, and he will get it deep into Red Raider territory. On the very next play, Gavin Fuqua takes it in for six touchdown. Austin, they go up 7-0 after the PAT. Aaron Savage's team struggled offensively throughout the first half in this one, but later in the first quarter, the defense made a play. Austin looks to be on the fast track for another touchdown, but the ball comes out. Quaylen Hampton jumps on it, so maybe some momentum for the Red Raiders. On the ensuing drive, they take a shot on third down, but Ethan Wynn is on top of it. So once again, the Austin defense comes up strong, and then the Black Bears offense is going to add another score. It's Gavin Fuqua once again. Austin went into the locker room up 14-0 at halftime, and they go on to win big 35-3. The Black Bears have now won eight of the last nine River City rivalry matchups. Next week, Austin heads to Harvest to play Sparkman, who has blown out everybody so, so far, by the way, and Decatur heads to Athens. 
down in Fife. The Geraldine Bulldogs taking on the Fife Red Devils. And the first half was all Bulldogs in this one. That set just weird to sound. Uh, really? It sounds so weird. On fourth and two, the Bulldogs decided to go with it. Number four, Jackson Colvin with the game to put the Bulldogs in striking distance. Next play, he keeps it and into the end zone to put the Bulldogs on the board. It's seven, nothing. The Bulldogs feeling the momentum. Remember, Fife hasn't lost a regular season game since 2021. And the Red Devils looking to answer, but that didn't turn out well. As Blake Dobbins showing off his arm, but the pass goes right into the arms of Carlos Mann for the Bulldogs, who takes it into Red Devils territory after the interception. And then Jackson Colvin with the pass to Carlos Mann, and he turns on the Jets to the end zone. The score at the half was 14-0. And guess what, Mo? Geraldine ends up defeating Fife 17 to 6. So the Red Devils lose a regular season game for the first time since 2021. They lost the Bulldogs in this one. Next week, Fife going to North Sand Mountain. Plainview going to Geraldine. We'll have to go back into the record book to see the last time Fife started 0 1. I have no idea. <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. Yeah. But shout out to Geraldine on that one. I'm pretty sure Coach Benefield is going to have his guys hey, bounce. Geraldine's back. for real. Like that, yeah. That's not a joke, my team. That's a fantastic team. So Absolutely. looking forward to seeing the Cap County. Hey, let's head over to Bill Washington Stadium now. Madison Academy playing host to Randolph in his budding rivalry. The Raiders won last year's matchup. Here come the Mustangs, though. Jacob Podiak throws it out to Kenyon Cherry. Cherry picks up the first down. Later on, it's the same connection. Podiak finding Cherry in the flat, and Cherry will just pick his way through the defense and get into the end zone for a touchdown right there. 7 to nothing. Mustangs galloping out in front, and the band members are loving it. Now, Randolph's first drive would stall, so Madison Academy gets good field position, and they take advantage of it. Josh Williams taking the handoff and walking into the end zone. Mustangs up 14 to nothing at that point. Let's check out your final from Bill Washington Stadium in Madison tonight. Final score, Madison Academy all over Randolph, 49 to 20. Next week, Randolph will travel over to St. John Paul, while Madison Academy will play host to J.B. Pennington. Let's head down to Florence now with the Lauderdale County Tigers taking on the Pirates of Rogers. Pirates will get on the board first. Tyser Wood showing off the arm strength, finding Damian Thompson right there in your mm. living room right there, and he makes the touchdown. Extra point was good, and the Pirates up 7 to nothing. Tigers getting the ball back. Jackson Lovelace not to be outdone, showing off his arm talent and finds Tucker Green, and Green is in the end zone for a score. Extra point was good. It's 7 to 7, but things seem to be going the right way for the Pirates. Check out Lee McCann ripping the ball away from Braxton Rose. Big number 62, Jacob. Hardnett coming up with the fumble recovery, but the Pirates can't capitalize, man. So the ship goes back over to the Tigers. Lovelace gets it over to Jackson. Ham, Ham picks up a first down. Then on the QB keeper, here comes Lovelace into the end zone for a score, 13 to seven. At that point, let's check out your final from the show. Lauderdale County goes on the win by final of 26 to 13. Next week, it'll be Lauderdale County taking on Clemens while Rogers will take on East Lawrence. All right, we got a huge game out in the shows. Let's go to Simon Williams for another preview. It was a showdown in the Shoals. That's right, Mo. This cross-county rivalry from Brawley Stadium went down tonight. It was Muscle Shoals and Florence. I've got your recap next on Fox 54. All right, welcome back, everyone. Of course, as we've seen our fair share of rivalries this past week during week one, including uh, that big upset by Geraldine, man, over Fife. I got some facts for you. 2013, the last time Fife went 0-1, it was against Geraldine. Last time they went 0-1 against a team not named the Geraldine Bulldogs, 2010. That's a long time. That definitely is a long time. Now, two teams have been playing for, you know, a decent amount of time, or Muscle Shoals and Florence. We'll head out to the Shoals right now to check in with Simon Williams. The he, Shoals man. He really is. He was all over that game. What you got for us, Simon? Hey, Mo. Week one, officially week one of the high school football season brought us here to Brawley Stadium in Florence for our first down Friday night game of the week and it was a cross county rivalry between Muscle Shoals and Florence. A seven game win streak in this rivalry was on the line. The Muscle Shoals student section aka the red zone turned fluorescent for this game against Florence. But little about this game was bright or flashy as we went three whole quarters without a score. Both teams struggled to move the ball down the field. 
We did see some defense. 421 left in the third. Trojans with it on offense. Henderson Flippo takes the snap. Hand off to Jacques Green. Whoops, right through his hands. Henry Blank covers it up, and it's Falcon ball. So second down on the ensuing drive. Lee Glover takes the snap. Looks for a man. He's got nothing, and the Trojans wrap him up. It's a huge play by the Trojan D. To the fourth quarter we go. 11.40 left. Cole Woods takes the snap. Fires to his left. It's the tight end. Hayden Vance with the reception and the big first down. Trojans in the red zone now. And that set up this field goal try. With 8.52 left, Jorge Garcia, he bangs one through the uprights for our game's first score. It's a 3-0 game, and I've probably never heard a student section cheer this loud for a field goal before. By Muscle Shoals in the fourth quarter with under four minutes to go. Gave them the lead. It was the first touchdown of this game. They wouldn't get that extra point, though, so we finished with a 9-0 final score, and Xavier Johnson had a pick with under a minute to go for Muscle Shoals, which sealed it. The win moved Muscle Shoals to 2-0 and dropped Florence to 0-2 on this young season. Both teams will be on the road next week in their region openers as Florence goes to Albertville while Muscle Shoals is at Columbia. Once again, your final score from Brawley Stadium, Muscle Shoals 9, Florence nothing at Brawley Stadium in Florence from your first down Friday night, Varsity Game of the Week, Simon Williams, Fox 54 Sports. From the home of Florence and the UNA Lions to some smaller school action in the Shoals, Mars Hill hosted Brooks. Both of these teams coming off wins in Week 0. And the Mars Hill student section made it a whiteout. How about this from first play from scrimmage? 11.42 on the game clock. Handoff goes to J.O. Dobbins. He's hardly touched on his way to the end zone. A touchdown of over 50 yards for Mars Hill to start off the game. It's 7-0 with the point after. The whiteout is loving it. Brooks can't convert on their next offensive possession, but that doesn't mean there can't be a highlight. How about the alertness in this special teams play? Punt rolls in Brooks's favor. Slade Vandermeer downs it at the one. Mars Hill would, as you'd expect, have to punt on the next drive after starting at their own one. We've showed you offense, special teams. How about some defense? Under eight to go in the first quarter. Second offensive drive for Brooks, and it's, it's in. It'll end with Morris Hills, excuse me, William Owens taking it the other way, all the way for the score. That's a pick six to make it 13-0. The point after would move the Panther lead to 14. Let's take a look at your final score as Brooks falls to Morris Hill. Panthers win 49-31. to Next week, it's going to be Wes Morgan versus Brooks, as we said earlier. Colbert Heights is going to play. Mars Hill. Down Highway 31, we go to Hartsville. Tigers taking on Jackson Olin. Of course, Hartsville trying to get in the win column after falling to Austin last week. They're up three to nothing, knocking on the door. Landon Blackwood throws it to the back of the end zone. Jaden Morris making an incredible catch for a touchdown. Looks hot right there, but they're up 10 to nothing. More from Hartsville. Blackwood throwing it down the sideline. And watch Marcus Hap Scott make the great catch and then tap his toes in. That would be good enough in the NFL, Nick, for a first down. Yes, it would be. Now the drive will stall, and it would lead to this. A 33-yard field goal attempt by Noah Yates. It's up, and it is good. So it is 13 to nothing, Hartsville. Now Tigers looking for a three-score lead before the half, and they get it. Lincoln Bryant running over a man at the goal line. He's into the end zone, 20 to nothing at the break. So check out your final as Hartsville gets their first win of the year. They beat Jackson Olin 35 to 8. Next week, huge game for Hartsville as they take on big-time I-65 rival Coleman. Okay, we will wrap things up on the show when we return. Stay tuned.
Let's go to Knoxville, Tennessee. St. John Paul II taking on Knoxville Christian. The Irish of Knoxville Catholic get on the board first. Braylon Harmon takes the pop pass from his QB, breaks a few tackles and scores. Irish up 7 0. After a drive score, uh, after a drive stalls, excuse me, by the Falcons. Here comes Knoxville Catholic again. Tyree King takes the swing pass 71 yards Ooh. to the end zone. 14 0. Knoxville Catholic will go up. And let's take a look at your final score as JP2 drops this one 35 to 8. Next week, Randolph is going to JP2, while Knoxville Catholic will play Ensworth. I don't think we'll have that game next week. Mike. I'm pretty sure we will not. All right, let's take you down to Helena where Buckhorn was um, uh, on the road tonight. Man, third quarter, they're already down 42 to nothing. Carson Acker in the backfield for the Huskies, taking the snap. Looks out to his right, finds David Bowler, who makes a Randy Moss-style catch. You got Moss right there on the sideline there. Then later on, it'll be Acker once again handing the ball off to Jeremy Spratlin. He will scamper 30 yards for a touchdown, 49 nothing at that point. Let's check out your final as Buckhorn falls to Helena, 55 to seven in that one. Next week, Buckhorn takes on Gaston City. Hey, real quick, MVP of the week making its way back next week. You saw a good performance this past week. What do you do, Nick? You're going to send an email to news at rocketcitynow.com. We need name, team, position, and stats. Absolutely. Let us know. Is that very, 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 very simple process. All right, for the entire crew, I'm Mo Carter. He's Nick. Simon was out in the field. Have a great weekend. We'll see you next time. B2EDI First Down Friday Night is sponsored by Whataburger, your community health mart pharmacy, and Regenesis.